Are you filming? Yeah. <laughs> you can't put that in there. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to my channel, guys. Things Tina does. Today we're making scones. I'm really excited about this, and I have a confession to make. I always get nervous when I'm making scones because I realized finally why, and the reason why is because. I'm always making them for other people, like people are coming over to my house or I'm taking them somewhere and I always feel like they have to be perfect. So anyway, if you're in a little bit intimidated about making scones but you, you want to give it a try, please, please, please come along with me. We're going to do this and we're going to take the intimidation out of it, okay? So you can try it once. I really think they're going to turn out great for you even on your first try. So we're going to get going, okay? You see I have my bowl and our good old handy dandy sifter here. All right, now, <laughs> this calls for two cups of all-purpose flour, and I'm just skipping a step by putting it right into, measuring it and putting it right into my sifter, okay? I like to use the, the scoop and fluff method. I don't know what you call it, but I call it a scoop and fluff method with my flour. And then we wanna make sure that we've measured it accurately. Okay, so two cups of all-purpose flour, one tablespoon of baking powder, half teaspoon of salt, all right? And I would just like to combine that a little bit in my sifter. Always do this, always have. I don't know, I just don't trust that it's all going to be incorporated really, really well unless I do that for some reason. So, then we sift away. Okay, so you've got your two cups all-purpose flour, one tablespoon baking powder, half a teaspoon of salt. Now into this, and look how quick this goes, you guys. Look at that. Look at how, how that does that. Isn't that great? Oh, I'm telling you what, I, I, I kind of get this little attachment to my sifter. But why wouldn't you? Look at how great that is, right? So now into this is going to go six tablespoons of cold, very cold butter, which you have already cut ahead of time into pieces and kept in the fridge, and one cup of heavy cream, which we're going to get right now. Clean knife. So in goes our butter. See that? See those nice pieces? All cut and prepared ahead of time and so nice and cold. I'll tell you what, you guys. Whenever you're making something like scones or a pastry crust or something like that where it tells you to cut your butter in, oh my goodness sakes, do that quick step ahead of time. You cut it and leave it in the fridge before you start this step because it just it's going to make your pastry crust or whatever you're making turn out so much better. I have learned that by trial and error. It's really true though. Recipes will tell you to do that, and it's a good idea. Okay, so we're cutting in our butter. We're going to cut this in until it gets to kind of like a, like some recipes will tell you, cut the butter in until it gets to the size of small peas. And some recipes will tell you, cut the butter in until it's like a crumb-like mixture or texture. Okay. You know. If you're annoyed or frustrated with somebody in your household, this is a nice way to work out all that aggression. It just blend away. That's right. You guys are gonna mind me and you're gonna figure out that what mom says is best. Just keep blending. Just keep blending. By the time all of your annoyance and Frustration is worked out. Your butter is going to be nicely cut into that flour. It's just going to be beautiful. Just beautiful. Okay. And that's where you want it, guys. Look at that. Gorgeous, right? Look at that. Fluffy right. butter cut into the size of small piece. Now, the classic scone is black currant added to it and orange zest. Today we're going to use black currants and lemon zest because I like lemon. 
So we're going to do that. So while I'm sprinkling this in, i got to tell you this hilarious thing. You may be thinking, scum, what's a scum? Isn't that pronounced scum? Yeah, well, scones are scones, a potato, potato, tomato, tomato. Let's call the whole thing off, but no, not today because we're making scones. All right, here we go. Now, in are the black currants, lemon zest. And I'm, since it, it's just to taste, I'm not going to pre-measure my lemon zest. I'm just going to get happy with it and grate it right in. So, this is to taste, guys. This is one of those things, if you're really, really in a lemon mood or orange mood or whatever, add as much as you want, okay? It's not going to hurt it. If you just want a little bit of flavor, then just go with a little bit, like a half a teaspoon or something like that, okay? Easy, easy. Do what you want. All right? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So we're going to just fork that through and the reason why we want to do that is because you want to coat your little pieces of dried fruit and lemon zest with the flour so they don't sink when you add your liquid ingredient, okay? All right, now we're going to add our cream. A lot of recipes call for an egg and in the classic scone, I do not care for the egg. And you notice I didn't use all of that cream because I want to make sure that I'm not overloading with that. Even though that rest, even though the recipe calls for that, and we are going to need a little bit more. So it's always easier to, to add a little more. Not so easy to take away. Remember that, right? All right, now, look how nicely that's coming together. And that's what you want. Now, like biscuits, scones are a lot like biscuits. You don't want to um, overbeat it or mix it because, wow, is it going to really ruin it. So you just want to fork it around until it's coming together like that. All right, we've got a teensy bit of dryness in the very, very bottom. So we're going to add that last little bit of that cream. Once again, your cream is really cold, as well as that butter that we cut in. Now this is what it looks like when it's, when it's coming together. It might look like it needs more moisture, but you have to remember that you're going to be pulling this together like this. So you don't want extra moisture in there because it'll make your scone tough. Okay? So we just want just enough moisture, but not too much. It's ready to put out on the mat and roll, pat it out and cut it to size however we want to cut, whether we want to use a cookie cutter or just um, cut it into wedges. We're ready to go. Guys, so it's come together like this and you're just going to work it with your hands just like this. Bring it together. And then I'm going to put it out on our lightly floured mat. While I'm rolling this out, i got to tell you guys this funny story. If you were wondering if it is pronounced scone or scum, we were on a trip years ago to Vancouver, British Columbia, and we stopped in this tea shop, and my mother, wise woman, asked one of the ladies in the tea shop, how is, what is the proper way to say scone or scone? And she said, well, really, you can say it any way you want. But here in Victoria, British Columbia, we say scone. So we say scone too. But anyway, scone, scone. I have a friend from Scotland, and she says, let's see, what does she, I think she calls it, I think she calls it a scone, but I can't remember for sure. If she calls it scone or scone. Well, I think I am going to need to roll this out just a smidge because those are really beautiful, nice and thick. Now, a little teensy bit more flour just so our rolling pin glides a little better. Okay, 
Now, what you're doing here is you're patting it out or you're rolling it out to whatever thickness pr pretty much that you want your scone to be, okay? I don't want mine to be super thin, so I'm going to leave it at that right there. Ha! Now, I know a lot of people like to get fancy and use their cookie cutters and all these different things, right? But, I'm using my pizza cutter. So, we just start one edge, roll it right through, and you guys, by the way, this smells so good. These black currants and the lemon zest in there. Ah, oh, you gotta try this, right? <laughs> gotta nudge it a little bit to get through all those black currants. Lovely. Okay, so now this is ready to go onto our baking sheet, which I have my little silicone mat on there. And we're just gonna transfer them over. Okay, guys, and remember, you wanna preheat your oven to 425. These bake in a nice hot oven. So 425 on the bake mode for 12 to 15 minutes or until they are just beginning to get golden brown just across the top and the edges, just lightly, not dark, okay? When they start getting a little golden brown like that, they're done, you pull them out, okay? We'll see you back in 15. Okay, guys, it has been our 12 minutes, and just like we were hoping, they turned out in that 12 minutes that beautiful just barely golden across the top. I know you can see that and on the edges and that's exactly how you want them. No browner than that, okay? Just that light golden flare. All right, and we've got to give this a try because as you can see, I have my tea ready. Mm -hmm. So, mm, look at that. Look at that beautiful crumb there, you guys. That texture is just fluffy, but tight enough to hold it. Mm. Mm. forget how good these are you guys because mm. obviously I don't make them every day but they're so good that texture perfect it's soft and fluffy yet nice crumb to it the lemon zest and black currant is coming through beautifully oh my goodness sakes and <laughs> with my tea yes Oh my word, that just completes it right there. Now, I know that you are wondering, what in the world is that thing? <laughs> I'm going to show you. Okay. So, if you've ever seen one of these in your great granny's hotch, and you wondered, what in the world is this thing? God bless. It's a server. All right, now we're going to load our scones onto the server. By the way, you guys, when you make these, and also do let them cool down completely before you transfer them from your baking sheet or your mat, okay? That way they'll hold together nicely for you. on whatever decorative plate platter tray that you have anything's gonna work okay so now um the whoa <laughs> oh how fun is that look you have to tighten this one yes you do don't want to have screw loose i know a little cheese but for me i love a little cheese so you gotta add that in there Spice of life and all that jazz, you know. Okay, look how beautiful is that? Okay, so traditionally with scones, you're gonna serve them with creme fraiche and preserves. You can serve plain, just that way with tea. Some people like them hot out of the oven with butter in the middle or on top spread with their tea. You can really do it however you want. The scone police is not going to come to your house and arrest you for doing it incorrectly, okay? So just have fun with it. And guys, as always, thanks for watching. If you try this, let us know because we want to know how it turned out for you, okay? Give us a thumbs up. Check us out on Facebook and make sure you hit that notification bell so you can see all of our videos that we're uploading for you every week. All right? Thanks for watching, you guys, and we'll see you next time on Things Tina Does. Bye-bye. Did you see that dog here flying through? <laughs> That's going to be in the front.
No! That's gonna be the part of the video. <laughs> Some people get really grossed out about stuff like that. Ooh, okay, go ahead.